special thanks to JHS Racing, RNG, Austin Racing and Tailored Wraps for their fantastic sponsorship of this track day racing series. Thank you guys. I've only bought a bloody blade, haven't I? All the things I've been saying about being careful with <laughs> a sports bike. Anyway, it's for the track, seriously. It's going to run it in carefully in the lowest mode and it's going to go on the track. It's going to look nothing like this by the time we've finished with it, but my God, what a sexy bike it is. Hot damn, me, Bicky and, uh, and D all very excited. We're all going to go and get out on this and our journey starts here with this purchase. We're going to take it on the track. You're going to join us on our individual journeys, getting better on the track, load of track day tips, and we're going to take it from there. Oh, can't wait. Right, I'm going to go on this bike in a minute, but not in this weather. It's extremely windy, gale force winds, on and off rain. I'm just going to get it back and concentrate back home safe and sound. Next time it's nice weather, I'm taking this beast out. And you're going to be with me when I do. Right, I've got the man himself, Mike Doble from Doble.co.uk. Honda dealer in Cloydon. He's going to tell me about this new blade that I've bought. So, Mike, over to you. <laughs> tell me everything. Okay. You can go into the um, engine settings right, here. Okay, here. So yeah. you've got this button here. Right, the select button. You press okay. this up and down. If you look just on here, you can see you've got a mode three there, mode two, and mode one, and user, okay? Yeah. So the mode one, two, and three, they're preset um, in the bike. Okay, so one being the most uh, aggressive, yeah, three so being one, the, the power, soft one. traction, engine braking, and your suspension. So yeah. You, yeah, basically, that's how that works. So, if you go into a user, then you can put in your own settings, oh, okay. okay? Yeah. So when you're in user, if you press the mode button down there, yep. you can then go into each individual section and, and put your, your you know, what, what setting you want to put in there. Okay. One question, so someone, I've said someone asked on a forum, what's that for? Do you know? Uh, and the other side, what is that access for? Yeah. Well, Why is it there? That, this will come off and that will give you access into whatever's the other side. <laughs> that's a cop out. Basically yeah. you don't have a clue, do you? No, well, <laughs> no one knows what that's often. for. It's got on the other side as well. Look. No one seems to know what this is actually oh, for. I can find out what it's for. <laughs> it's for covering up what's underneath. Yeah, brilliant, <laughs> brilliant. Alright then, how many thanks? I appreciate all your efforts uh, Send me the bike, marvellous, looking forward to it. I'm going to take it damn easy on the way home. What a beauty though, what a beauty. Okay, I know what you're thinking. How come I've got a tail tidy yet? No, you're thinking what on earth is a rider as poor as me doing on a bike like this? This is actually, probably, actually and arguably the fastest bike on the road. The Honda CBR 1000 Double SP2 version. There's better bikes for the track. You could argue that, you know, R1 and the Ninja are probably actually better for the track. But on a road, given the suspension setup on this bike, it might be unbeatable. That's why it's won so many, in fact, it's won the most races in the TT in this modern era. Uh, quite simply, as you saw from one of the episodes, Bicky said that the best way for me to learn how to turn and turn a lot better is to do track days. So this is going to be the start of a whole track day series. It's going to be about taking this bike, it's going to be about removing the metal. I won't be doing that, Bicky Wall. Putting on a race fairing, I'm going to get that sponsored, liveried up with which bike logo and the sponsors. Then we're going to put all RNG kind of uh, protection all over the bike. And then we're going to take it to track day and we're going to see how I progress. Well, I've been riding this bike in the lowest setting of all. Quite frankly, it scares the bejesus out of me in that lowest girly setting. Uh, no respect to the girls out there, I'm one of you, when it comes to these sort of bikes. But, my God, what a fantastic bike. So we'll take it out in a second, and I'll tell you what I feel about this bike and why I think, actually, it's pretty damn safe. So here is the bike, in all its glory, at Newlands Corner. One of the uppermost peaks in the Surrey Hills. What a fantastic day today. It's a bit windy, as you can probably hear. But let's have a closer look at this bike. So it's got a standard stock exhaust. In fact, this is standard it came from the factory. It's one of 33 in the UK, one of 500 globally. Honda CBR 1000 Double R Fireblade SP2. This is number 212 of the 500. The only way you can tell this above the uh, usual SP is that this blue paint here, the kind of carbon effect, stands out 
you look closely, it's got the March Cassini forged wheels, which are super light, adding to lower inertia, which does make actually apparently about 8% difference, which is an incredible difference if you think about it, when you're talking about marginal gains. Well, it's got the Olin's front and wear, front and rear, yeah, that's it, uh, fully automatic suspension, as you can tell by these giveaway signs here. Um, now, as you know, my back and neck are pretty shit, so riding this bike more than 20 minutes kills me. So I have to take stops all the time. When we go on the track, it won't be so much of a problem, because after that time I'll be bugging anyway, trying to concentrate, so I'll be taking loads of brakes. Um, so we're going to strip all this fairing off completely. New back end unit, all this is going to be that plastic fibre or just plastic. We're going to get guards here, guards on the swing arms, the front bobbins, engine protectors bar in protectors, uh, all kindly provided by RNG, who are the leaders in that field. Gonna, obviously, this tail tide is going to go. In fact, we're going to tell all the mirrors and lights off, of course, which should save a bit of weight as well. Quick shifter. Now we're going to change that around so it's one click up for the first gear, and then you go down, clicking down to go up the gears, which is apparently how they do it in the racing world. That's what Biggie says, no, I've heard that before. So that's fine. Um, flippin' hell, what a nice bike. <laughs> I'll tell you more about it as we're going along, but my God, what a machine. It is just fabulous. So um, let's take it out. Right, let's have a look at the wishy-washy woogie, because um, it's got quite a lot going on. Turn it on, there it goes. Ugh! beautiful LCD screen you can change the look of the screen this one probably can't see it in this kind of light but it's got a carbon fiber background you can choose some different kind of settings it's got a nice clear gear indicator clear speedo rev counter not brilliant but you can change it so the revs are more prevalent I think that's kind of a race screen which should really help but it's got everything it's got the range to go when you're running out of fuel tupometer Tells you the quick shift is on, side stands up, that's pretty cool. I'm rather stalling it for getting it up. Time's up there. And the modes are all down here now. It's got five modes. If I press this mode button here and go along to the modes, you know they have to move these up and down. So that's mode three, which is girly mode. Uh, click it down once for mode two. You can see that the power, traction, electric braking, suspension settings are all changed for you. Then going into mode one, they're the most kind of severe or less restrictive when you're on the track. It's also got user one and user two, which is quite handy because all three of us are going to take this bike on the track. One of us hopefully will put up with the standard and the other two can set up the bike to exactly how they want it. Now, Bicky will be able to gear that in quite quickly because he's used to it, but myself and D will probably, uh, not have a Scooby-Doo, but over a bit of time and usage, we'll probably start to realise, yeah, actually, a bit less engine braking there, a bit less traction there, I need a bit more power, etc. which makes a lot of sense, but at least it's there for you, and it's still quite simple. It's not quite as hideous as the Matrix and the R1. So there you go. All right, I must put it back on. Uh... I must put it back on mode three. <laughs> I'm not good enough to ride it in a better mode. We all know that. Okay, right, let's start this up. Let's pull the thing in, just press the switch. There you go. Doesn't sound massively beastly. Stock exhaust. At least you can get all the track dates. Right. Marvellous, 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 marvellous. Oh, this bike's really comfortable for the first five minutes. It starts weighing in on the back of the neck, but when I'm resting, my feet are down fully flat, so it's suitable for a lot of different people, different heights. Right now, in this lowest mode, mode three, with the highest settings of engine braking traction, more compliant suspension, the throttle, absolutely perfect, non-jerky whatsoever, extremely easy to ride. I say this, and I mean it. Someone could pass their test and get on this bike in the lowest mode, and it'd be a lot easier to ride than the bike they learnt on, typically one of those diversion 600s, or some other 600cc motorbike that you've got to pass your mod to and test on. 
it's ridiculous. The throttle is absolutely perfection itself. I've tried it briefly in the other settings, and uh, it wasn't, well, it's just obviously more direct, so it becomes a bit more jerky, but it feels like that. Well, I'm using the clutch going to second gear. Sometimes, if you're not getting enough revs, it just goes into neutral. <laughs> the lowest mode, this bike is still mad and the brakes are absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's going to be a good bike. It's like a 22 grand list price, although obviously there's a lot of people discounting it now, trying to get rid of the last units. But this is the top of the tree, state of the art motorcycle for beasting it on the road. It turns like a dream. This bike is telepathic. Now, would I have got, I wouldn't have got the Ninja, but I did was like the R1, but they weren't doing this sort of deal. This was 0% PCP with two grand dealer contribution. Worked out on the monthlies. It was impossible to say no. I was seduced by it. It's Bicky's fault, I blame him. Oh, it's a beauty, absolute beauty. I say it's telepathic because you don't think about turning. Some bikes you kind of have to put a little bit of input into it. It feels like you're putting input in to get it to turn. Mentioning no Harleys. This bike, you do think, you do look, and it just seems to go there. You don't seem to do anything. You just, you could, I could flex the muscle on one buttock and it will change five degrees to that side. <laughs> oh, it's great, bloody great. Uh, the gears are very good, the quick shift up and down, auto blipper, it's got all the technology you'd expect in a bike of this saliva. That being anti really anti-stoppy, anti-side, slide, scooby-doo, ABS, Flipping that, flipping this, flipping that, it's got everything. So if I do crash this or drop it, then it is, and it has got to be my fault. Now, because well, I've ridden down here, I'm already starting to feel a little bit of discomfort on my wrists, but mostly in the centre of my back, the muscle either side of the spine. Now, I might have to get back into yoga, which I've left over quite a bit. Uh, stopping up the back muscles because I'm not used to this. I don't want to go on a track day until I've kind of got that strength. Because that would be uh, rather silly. It's fatigue in itself is dangerous. I hope you can hear me right. It's really blustery today. Mind you, it always is in the Surrey Hills. It's quite so urgent, and this is in sixth gear, and you could leave it in that, apart from like really low urban speeds. Not that it's got much torque down there, but it's just so incredibly smooth with the pickup. So only quick shifter, you've got to be putting it on to get the best out of it. It's a lovely bang and noise as you go through the revs aggressively. I mean, really, 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 really nice sound. And it's all engine based, I don't want to do the exhaust, the exhaust does bugger all. Doesn't add anything to it orally. Well, I'm thoroughly impressed with this bike. The first time I got on it, I realised actually, on the road, it slaughters the R1. Sorry, it beats the R1. It slaughters the S1000RR BMW. Now, any of you being on the new one, it's they seem to have made it a little bit like Honda used to be. They've kind of tamed it down, toned it in. I think the emissions compliance has really buggered it. So yes, yeah, okay, you can grant you get it better flowing with a new exhaust. But generally, it just seemed less of an animal. Uh, and it's much to the detriment of its character. Uh, that's what I felt. Still a comfort bike and still a phenomenal tool or weapon, don't get me wrong. I just didn't feel as much as I felt on the old S1000RR, which was at that point the best suit bike I'd ever been on.
If you like a super bike, this is flaws. It has no flaws. It's bloody fantastic. Yeah, quite surprisingly, the back brake is actually pretty good in this bike. Compared to most super bikes that I've been on. Uh, that's quite good for me. I use a back brake quite a bit. Um, probably more than I should do. But I have got my advanced uh, riding course coming up soon, which I'll be sharing with everybody. So keep an eye out for that. Let's see where I... I'm going right, let's see where I am going wrong. Brakes. Lovely. What a bike. This bike is Dreamsville. Absolute Dreamsville. Oh dear. So there you go. If you've got any questions about the bike, please ask below. It's a very special bike indeed. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Oh, there you go. Wow. What a bike. What a phenomenal bike for the road. It's on the borders on ridiculousness. That's how good this bike is. The suspension is just... Well, otherworldly. What a bike. If you've got any questions about it, let me know. It's obviously a super rare bike. I'm going to try and look after it to the best of my ability. I'm never going to go near the end of my ability on this one. I know where I'm going wrong, so uh, I promise you I'll take it easy and look after it. It's a privilege and an honour to own a bike like this. And I want to keep it for at least three years and then, uh, then see what happens. Maybe go that super naked route. I don't know. Maybe chop it in for the new uh, Fireblade version that's coming out in 2021. I don't know, maybe I've had enough of it. Who knows? But all I can say is, what a bike.